Hey guys, so in my last video I went over how GraphQL resolvers works and one of the cool parts about them is you can get data from anywhere. You can hard code it, you can get it from an API or you can make a request to a database, it doesn't really matter. So what I'm going to show you how to do today is how to make a request to an API and then send that data all using GraphQL. So the API I'm going to be taking a look at is the Star Wars API. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a single request and then see how you would use this if you were to query it through GraphQL. So here is what the one request looks like here. And I'm not going to go through and do the entire thing because there is a lot of different types in here. So what we're going to do is just this first half right here. And this is for a single person. And then from that person we're going to be grabbing films. So here is, I have set up a simple GraphQL server. And right now, here's my schema, which has a single type, hello, and then a single resolver. So we're gonna add on to this. So I'm gonna create a type called person. And this is how I would go about doing pretty much any REST API. I would grab the response and then just copy and paste it into something like this. So, and I just go one by one, so the name is a string and then the height is also a string and then just go down the line like this and create the types for it and in this case most of the things are strings looks like all of them are strings and if we wanted to maybe we could turn it into an enum or whatever so homeworld here this is actually going to uh, an another API request. So really with this what we'd want to do is create another type called um, worlds or something and then have all the fields inside of that. Um, I'm going to not worry about home, home world for now because I'm going to do films instead. So I'm going to create a separate type called film and then I'm going to put all the fields that I want to support for film inside of there. And so instead of just displaying like an array of strings what I'm going to do is have film be the type film and it's going to return an array of those. So now when I fetch the person I can actually query some of the fields inside of films and that is actually going to be a separate API request as we saw because there's multiple films that could possibly happen. So I'm going to copy this and just go check out a film over here and then we're going to do the same procedure. We're going to copy and paste. Now I don't want to go too deep so I'm not going to worry about these right here but I'm just gonna grab these fields. Um, if you were doing this for real, you'd wanna definitely grab all these fields though. And let's just, we can go down the line, delete those, string, int. And the last two are strings as well. Okay, so now we pretty much have um, two types set up. So what would the resolvers look like to actually get this data? So we're going to be making multiple API requests to fulfill this data and send it back to the user. And I'm just going to add a new query that we can do up here. It's called get person and we're just going to pass in a parameter. And if we look over here, notice how we can put like a one or a two. So that's going to be just like an integer that matches, I guess, the ID of that person. So I'm just going to call it ID, and it's going to be an integer. This is a required field, and then we're going to return back a person if we find it. Okay, so let's start coding the resolver for this. So I'm going to call it get person, or it has to be called get person, and I don't care about the first field. Um, the second field is going to be the arguments, which I want the ID, and I'm going to uh, just expand it. So we'll say, or destructure and grab the ID. And then last is the context, which I don't care about. Okay, so then we just need a comma there. So really all you need is to pick your favorite um, request library. I'm going to be using node fetch for this, but you could download any number of them and we're just gonna make an API request so I'm gonna say const response is equal to await fetch and here's where we're gonna put our URL so the URL for us is going to be this thing right here and then we just add that to the very end 
our ID. And I'm going to make this asynchronous, so it's totally fine to make your um, resolvers asynchronous and return promises. So next, what we're going to do is get the JSON response, and we're just going to return that. So response.json. And that's it. So this is going to be a promise that we return, and then GraphQL is going to resolve it. And that's the only step we need to do. But if we were going to do this, if we look at our response, we're going to get a string of an array of strings for films, and we don't want that. What we want is all this stuff right here, and even more if we wanted to, right? So what we're gonna do is resolve the film field. So I'm gonna create a resolver for film, and the field that we're going to do this for, I mean, not the film, this is going to be person. So inside of person, we're resolving uh, the field called films. So films, and then here we can put, for example, the parent and or the root. Uh, there's not really any arguments or any of that, so we can just pass it in. So this is just going to be an array of strings, right? And for each one, we want to make an API request to get this. So what we're going to do is I guess we could just map over them is one way. So I could say const promises is equal to parent.map and we'll make this asynchronous and each one of these is going to be a URL. And so for each URL or for each film, we're gonna say const response is equal to await fetch of that URL and then we're going to return url.json and I mean response.json there we go so now promises is going to be just an array of promises so we're going to just return promises.all and we're going to just take and I mean promise.all and we're going to pass in promises So just again, what this is doing is films, um, we're going to resolve this field and in parent, we're going to be getting the films field, which is going to be array of strings or array of URLs. We're going to map through each one and for each one, we're going to fetch the uh, data for it and then we're going to return it. And uh, since it's asynchronous, we're going to get a bunch of promises and we're just going to return those promises. All right. That's how that's working. Let's try querying it and see what happens. So if I refresh this, you can see our schema. We can now get a person. So I'm going to say get person. And I'm going to say an ID of one. And I'm just going to get make this real simple at first. So let's just get the name of the person and see if that's correct. So we do see Luke Skywalker, which we uh, get for the name as well. So now we can we could query all these fields too if we wanted to, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, we'll try grabbing the films. We we know we're gonna get them right, so we could try height mass, height mass birth. Any of these fields we wanted to, we now have and we're uh, are available. So let's do film. So films inside films. I want for example the title. Um, oh parent dot map. I wanted parent.films. Uh, I just changed it, so I guess it didn't refresh. Um, looks like it, I'm just gonna restart it. Grab that, and run it again. Okay, there we go. So now we are getting the films, and we see all the different titles, so that's pretty cool. So. In behind the scenes, this is making one request to get the person, and then one, two, three, four, five API requests. So six total to get all this data. And now we can grab as many fields as we want from the title. So I could get the opening crawl, director, producer, any of that. So let's get the director and the producer as well. Uh, and we can see all that data is there. So this gives you an idea of how you would 
basically be able to um, fetch data from APIs or get your data from API uh, when using GraphQL. Now you might not always need to do the mapping through uh, and do promise.all if you don't have an array. So if I just had, um, and actually let's do one more to show you what this would look like. Um, so let's bring Homeworld back in since it's actually pretty easy to do these. So this guy is a single URL. So how would you do a single URL versus an array of URLs? Let's take a look at that. So is this, I wanna see what the planets looks like. Okay, so planets, I'm gonna just do these three fields on the planets. So I'm gonna say type planet. And you could do, uh, numbers for these if you want to, but I'm just going to represent them as strings like the API does. And I'll we'll just tab those over. So now for the person, they have a field called home world, right? So I can add that and that's going to be of the type planet. So now inside my person type, I have a new field I need to resolve, the home world. So home world and we're gonna take a parent. And now for this, since there's only one string, we don't need to do any type of mapping. We're just gonna say const response is equal to await um, parent.homeworld. And that's gonna be the URL, so we just wrap it with fetch. So now we fetch it, and then we're just gonna return response.json. And again, this is gonna have more fields than we need. So it is gonna just filter it to these three that we have here. Okay, so now we could grab the films. We could also get the home world. Just need to refresh this. Um, looks like I just need to restart. Oh, I need to make this asynchronous. There we go. And now my server restarted. And in a second, hopefully it should be able to be reached. We can also just restart th this. So now I'm gonna say home world and I'm gonna get the orbital rotation and the name, was it? Okay. So now at the very bottom, we see the home world grabbed as well. And it looks like we got the right values too. So that's how you would handle an array and that's how you would handle a single URL. And uh, yeah, so this is how you would be fetching data across um, an API. Now, if you wanna try this out, we just did a subsample of these. A uh, good exercise for you if you wanted to practice this is to go try to get the species, vehicles, starships, any of these, and try to do more. Um, and you can start nesting these too. So for example, um, this planet has a film. And actually, I could show you guys that real quick if we wanted to. So for example, I could create a new resolver for uh, the type planet. And this is actually pretty useful. So let me show you guys. Um, we're going to reuse or reuse this. So notice here, um, I'm getting films. We can also get films inside of planets, right? Because it's right here. So I can say, oops, we can add this type to my planet. And so we'd have to add a resolver for it though. So we're gonna say planet and we're gonna grab the films field. And this is where we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did here. Um, so what we could do is say const resolve films is equal to this function. And now we can share it across both of them. So now I can resolve films for planets and resolve films for uh, the person. So both these fields are now using the same function up here. And we're able to do that because we named them films here, right? So the name film matches up with the film there. So we could use uh, the same name here. Okay, let's take a look at that. 
So now, if I come down here, I can say inside of home world, I should have a films. There we go. And it looks like I just need to restart it. And inside of that, I can select the title and the director and the producer. Okay. So now you can see we are having a much longer request because now we're doing quite a few um, requests inside of here. So now the films inside of Homeworld, um, we're getting all these films as well. Now, a smart thing to do would be to like cache these films. So like if we um, fetch the same film across two of these, like there might be some duplicates. Um, so let's see, New Hope, did we do fetch New Hope over here? So notice how we fetch the new hope inside of Homeworld and inside of um, up here for grabbing the person. So we duplicated a request. So uh, a good thing to do with GraphQL is to do some caching on the server side so that doesn't happen. But that is for a different video. Um, that's it for this. I recommend trying this out and getting used to it. It's pretty nice. And you can pretty much very quickly start adding a whole API, all the schema, get your schema set up. I kind of just copy and pasting over and then doing requests like this. But that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.